Welcome, Gary. Or uh, as the audience uh, would like to call him, is my real estate godfather. <laughs> uh, I've, I've known him for a long time, and he's helped me, uh, guided me through many good things. So, uh, so Gary, just for our listeners and viewers, just kind of give us a background of who you are, majors in price, what you guys do. So, well, thanks, Alex and Eric. I really appreciate the opportunity and you having me here. And uh, never knew I was the godfather, yeah. but I'll <laughs> gladly accept that title. I appreciate that. And um, that makes what I do all worthwhile, just hearing that uh, people I've worked with for a long time, uh, clients, uh, think of me that way and appreciate in, uh, that I've been beneficial to their, uh, to their business and their lives, and uh, that makes it all worthwhile. Yeah. Um, so as far as what I do, so um, I am a um, real estate attorney. Uh, I have been in practice uh, for 29 years, come February 1st is my business anniversary date. So years. we're coming up on 20 now, which is yeah. hard for me to even say. I can't believe that comes out of my mouth that I'm, <laughs> I'm that old, that's, that's <laughs> but, uh, old but I am. I am. <laughs> <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> what is that? I, was, I think I was three years old when you started. Uh, <laughs> yeah, well, that makes me feel even better now. <laughs> two, two but, years thank old. Thank you, Eric, for saying that. I, I, I appreciate that. <laughs> <laughs> two years old, actually. Yes. I'm old that. <laughs> <laughs> in fact, my daughter, uh, who uh, just turned 19 last month, uh, she is now the same age as my wife when I met her. Mm -hmm. So I met my wife right after her 19th birthday. Now we have a daughter who just turned 19. So the whole number age it's, thing is really uh, coming together. doing a number <laughs> on me these days. Yeah. But yes. <laughs> so well, hopefully all these years do equate to uh, a lot of great experience um, in real estate. I always like to say that I've seen it all, but then something comes along and, you know, lo and behold, it's something new. But, uh, but based on my experience, you know, we're able to figure it out and, uh, get through it and guide you know my clients uh, the best as possible. Um, so, yeah. So being in real estate, so basically um, to sort of boil it down in a nutshell, um, I represent homeowners and investors buying and selling real estate, whether it be investment property uh, to uh, make money on, to buy and sell, uh, or as a rental, or um, uh, even just to uh, to live in. Um, all different types of transactions in real estate throughout the Chicago land area. Um, that's what I primarily focus on. Yeah, that's awesome. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, he's a big help to our business. Absolutely. Especially. Yeah. <laughs> so um, we're very familiar. We just want to make sure that the audience right. knows what you do. Right. Um, so 29 years. What the... What, where do we begin? <laughs> really? <laughs> well, how much time uh, we have? Yeah, yeah. Uh, we, we'll pro well, we could go as long as you want, I think. Um, so, how did you get started uh, in the in the space? Um, did you first start out in with your own practice, or how did you, uh, like, right after law school, did you always want to be in law? Things like that. So, so um, start there. Yeah, that's a great, great place to start. <laughs> um, yeah, so I always did want to be a lawyer. Didn't know why. Um, I think part of it was just because I knew um, I came from a family. Nobody in my family ever graduated college. And so I just wanted to be the first one to graduate college and thought, oh, if I could be a professional of some sort, that would be really great, you know, and, and really great achievement. Um, so my dad was always in different jobs. Actually, my dad was in real estate when I was a kid. Um, back in the 70s, he, uh, yes, 1970s. <laughs> um, he actually worked for a couple of developers. He had a uh, broker's license. He um, represented clients um, in buying and selling real estate, worked for some developers. Um, so I just had a, sort of an interest in real estate, but I really just wanted to be a professional of some sort. Uh, and I knew medicine was not for me. I knew I could not be a doctor. So that what else was left was being a lawyer. So I'm like, I'm going to go to law school. Versus I, look, I didn't know why. I didn't know what I was going to do. Um, but I was always a goal of mine just to be, you know, go to law school. Um, and then coming out of law school, um, I had known my now partner at Majors and Price, Mark Price, uh, ever since we were in high school. Oh, wow. um, we went to high school, different high schools, but we knew each other through high school. We um, went to the same you know, college, went to the University of Illinois. Again, you know, not really that friendly, but, you know, just sort of, know each other from, you know, mm -hmm. being the same, growing up in the same area. Uh, coincidentally, then went to the same law school. Throughout law school, we, we got closer, um, became better friends. And by third year of law school, we had a lot of similar classes and started studying together all the time uh, for finals and, and uh, tests and whatnot. Uh, realized we worked really well together. Mm -hmm. And um, 
after law school, um, we both started looking for jobs. Um, it, we both did well in law school, but the job market was tight, and right. it just you know wasn't uh, easy to find find a job. So uh, little by little, we just sort of uh, started doing some work for friends and relatives. Mm -hmm. um, as I say, the rest is history. I could give you a little more <laughs> if you like, but I feel, uh, like, that, 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 that. I feel like that's not the the rest is history. I think there's some, <laughs> the road bumps. Road bumps. Like, I'm yeah. sure there's plenty. Yeah. <laughs> so it's actually a good story how we how we actually made the jump to go into business together. So mm -hmm. what happened was, um, like I said, so we got out of law school. We had some uh, friends. I had um, uh, one of my dad's friends needed some needed some. Um, or wanted a will done. Mm -hmm. uh, my Mark, my partner, my partner to be. Yeah. His brother was a doctor, needed some collection work done, uh, and we said, "Hey, we have nothing else going on. Let's just see if we can figure this out. Work together, you know, just mm -hmm. help them, help these people out." You yeah. know, so we did for the first few months, still looking for a job, you know, not knowing what, what we we're going to do. Uh, and then one Sunday morning. Uh, about probably in, you know, about January 1990, uh, everything changed. Mm -hmm. So one Sunday morning, I went with my dad to a delicatessen in Skokie, which is no longer there anymore, mm -hmm. and ran to a friend of my grandmother's. Mm -hmm. He said, oh, so what are you doing now? You know, and I said, well, I just graduated law school. My, my buddy and I were doing some work together for some, you know, friends and relatives. And he's like, oh, well, are you looking for office space? I'm like, well, not really. We're just a couple of buddies doing some work together, you know. So he says, well, you know, if, if you're interested, call my son. He's got this little office in Northbrook. It's like a hundred square foot office, 10 by 10. And, um, you know, he uh, is looking to lease it. So I said, okay, we'll go. We'll, we'll, I'll, I'll, yep, I'll call him up. We'll check it out. So go in there. He wanted $400 a month for the rent for uh, a six-month lease. So my partner at the time who had just gotten married said, oh, I can't do this. You know, I've, I've got a wife now. I got to make money. I got to get a job. I can't go on my own. And, uh, you know, it's just not the right thing for me. And so myself, I was just getting tired because this is, that's what we passed the bar exam in November. Mm -hmm. Now we're in January. So it's about two, three months of just kind of working out of our house, doing a little bit of work, not really, you know, not getting a job, not, mm -hmm. you know, nothing really happening for us. And I got tired of it. I'm like, listen, I got to do something. I can't just work on my house for an hour a day, work on this stuff. You know, I, <laughs> yeah. I, I go, I need to, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm bored. I, I you know, I want to make money. I want to do something, you know. Mm -hmm. So I told my, I told Mark, I said, I'll tell you what, I will sign the lease for the first six months, only me. If it were $2,400, six months, you know, mm -hmm. if it doesn't work out, you could just walk out of the office. You're free to go. No hard feelings. We're still friends. But I have to go to an office every day. I, I got to work. You know, yeah. I, I got to do something. You know, so I did. I signed the first lease by myself. Uh, we went to this ten by ten office, bought some really cheap furniture. These two humongous desks to fit in this little office. Uh, the old fax machine with the roll paper that uh, you know just kind of scrolled out like a mm -hmm. big scroll. You know, didn't even cut the paper and wasn't <laughs> even on real paper. It was on like this, you know, uh, like um, parchment. Yeah. And um, so about the, the fax machine, it was in the C, I still remember the brand, it was in the C <laughs> fax machine, uh, about one computer between us. And we just started doing some advertising, some direct mail, mm -hmm. and went to work. You know, we started, and then the guys in the, um, in the office, so there were a bunch of other lawyers. Uh, there was um, a real estate uh, lawyer there who I, we, I still know to this day, mm -hmm. uh, personal injury lawyer, a general practitioner, um, a divorce lawyer and everything that they didn't want, you know, to handle. They said, Hey, yeah, you're Mark. Yeah. I got this thing for you. You guys yeah. do this. You guys do this. <laughs> That's great. And, um, and we just went to business and I haven't looked back. And right, I haven't looked back. <laughs> That's actually a pretty great story. That's, that's like an, almost a, a lead system just by having a community of attorneys. What were, was it just an office filled with other attorneys or? How yeah, did... so it was, um, I'll say about, about, yeah, about six individual offices. Mm -hmm. um, the biggest cast of characters you'll ever want to meet. <laughs> also <laughs> practitioners, you know, the divorce lawyer, the yeah. personal injury lawyer. Um, and then actually our landlord who just had a general practice. He did um, like trust work and 
Um, his dad would come in every day to sort the mail and hand it out and <laughs> yeah. made the same dumb joke every day, you know, yeah. that we had Wonder Mail. You wonder if it's ever going to get here. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, you know, uh, it was just a real cast of characters. Um, you know, the personal injury lawyer is always on the phone with insurance companies yeah. screaming his head off. Yeah. Uh, the divorce lawyer, you know, he was always just a miserable human being complaining about something every day. And, yeah. Yeah. and there's my partner and I just, you know, a couple of 25-year-olds, young and energetic, and just <laughs> yeah. like, you know, we we're excited to be there. Everybody else was just oh, another day, you know, here at work. And we were just, okay, yeah, yeah let's, let's do it. Let's, yeah. You so, know. So, so while you guys were in the office for that s six months, did you guys find success like immediately or did it, uh, did it take a while or kind of how did that go in the beginning? Uh, no, it, um, it took a while. Right. Um, in fact, actually, shortly after we moved uh, into the office, I actually got my first real estate closing which was my mom <laughs> <laughs> so I, I learned under fire with my with my mom yeah uh, which was great because if i mess up you know she'll forgive me right. yeah um but yeah so she was actually moving at the time and buying a house and selling her, her house so uh one of the other lawyers in the office kind of was the real estate lawyer then um he uh sort of guided me and helped me through it which was actually really nice about going into that kind of situation because you know at the time we really didn't know what our niche would be or what type mm -hmm. of lobbies we really were just open to whatever mm -hmm. fell in our lap so we we had other people in the office to um we were sort of like our mentors right. you know, i mean they gave us advice they gave us a little bit of business they you know if we had questions they would answer our questions um so that was a good a really nice situation for somebody new or starting out because you know right out of law school most obviously most people go to work for somebody and they, yeah. they learn but we were learning on the job under fire you know, That's with awesome. just this group mm -hmm. of other lawyers, and you know, in our office suite. Yeah. Um, but um, but no, as far as you know, being profitable. Um, I mean, I don't think we were. I, I mean, our business is not a real cash intensive business, but um, but by the same token, we just sort of kept our expenses very low. Mm -hmm. You know, our rent was, like I said, four hundred dollars a month. You yeah. know, we uh, outside really didn't have too much. It was just, but not a lot of business either. So uh, you know, we weren't making a lot of money, but then again, we weren't um, spending a lot of money or incurring, you know, debt. But um, but the one thing was is interesting, I think, though, is from that day, because starting out with that very first day, my fear was always, where's my next client going to come from? What, what am I going to do? Where's business coming from? Yeah, yeah. And I'll be completely honest with you, 29 years later, that same mentality and that same fear is in me. I, that has not changed one iota in 29 years. I'm as, um, uh, I would say, a service is the right word, but uh, or fearful, but um, it's still the number one con business concern of mine every day as it's been the last 29 years. And people yeah. always say, you know, even uh, my employees, I'm not even employees, will say, you know, oh, you know, Gary, what are you so worried about? You know, or, you know, we've, all these people know us now, we have a good reputation, we're doing well, you know, I'm like, but. It doesn't matter what they say. I still have them in my head. I only look for, okay, well, I just got a, had a closing today. Well, essentially, I lost my client today because now that closing's over. Where's my next one coming from? Mm -hmm. What do I have, you know, what yeah. can I do? What, what, what do I have to meet? Who am I going to network with? Or what am, what am I doing for that next piece yeah. of business? You know, and, that, yeah, that, I think, I think <laughs> that's very common for a lot of entrepreneurs. Uh, Earl, I think, I think it was like our very first episode or second episode. I can't even remember, but I brought up, uh, the, the Nike founder and right. in his book shoe dog he actually states that like when they were generating about 400 million dollars of revenue he was still afraid and it was right. because he's so used to he remembered um, how it was in the beginning and he was afraid of losing it all so I, I don't think that that's a that, uh, I think we, yeah I don't think that's uncommon at mm -hmm. all I think getting comfortable is how you you actually endanger your business by being right. kind of always having this neurotic <laughs> <laughs> neurotic uh, fear is what keeps us going well I'm definitely neurotic so, <laughs> <laughs> so no doubt yeah, so I that's, think that's I actually pretty too. cool to hear again because that kind of I to me like that speaks a lot about your character right that you're always just kind of going out there like I said Gear, you're like the most like networking person that I know, I know you've always been big at that, and that kind of helps me kind of tie the dots a little bit. So that's pretty, that's pretty sweet. So, so yeah. So back to like just starting off when in the beginning. So obviously the reason I bring that up because a lot of people think that like just because you're doing business, like you're gonna find success like right away, first year, first two years. But like oftentimes it's not like that at all, right? You're just grinding in the beginning, learning how to live, you know, underneath your means and just 
putting things together. So yeah, that was that. That's re it's really cool to hear that. So when did you, from that time on, like start to know that real estate was kind of going to be your niche? Um, that's a good, great question. Um, so I always enjoyed real estate the most. So I mean, it's always been a part of my practice. Mm -hmm. um, but just to make ends meet and pay the bills, you know, right. we would always do other things for a long time. Mm -hmm. um, and it took a while before real estate. The business, my business of real estate was enough that I could tear away from the other right. types of law that I didn't enjoy as much uh, and just focus on real estate. Um, but I think, you know, in answer to that question, you're, what you were saying before, Alex, is that um, I think when that day comes mm -hmm. that you realize that you you have a, a, a business, I don't think you really, you realize it. I think it's just, um, if you just do the right things and you and you keep at it and you do, um, you know, you do network and you keep um, putting yourself out there and meeting people and um, just believe in what you're doing, I think all of a sudden, you know, won't hit you right away, but you look back and like, hey, wait a minute, I do have a business. It, it's worked. It has it has built up. And I think that's, you know, more of my, my people around me, my employees see, um, but I... You know, I mean, I think, yeah, if you really push me out, say, yeah, I, I, you know, yeah, I do a good business and things are good, but I don't ever want to have that mentality. I don't really, um, I don't know if you want to say believe it, but I don't focus on it. I, mm -hmm. I like to keep the, like I said before, I like to keep that, um, that mentality of, you know what, I'm still that guy who was 29 years ago looking for that first, you know, right. uh, closing or that great client or whatever it is, you know, just always looking forward, never relaxing, thinking, you know, rest on my laurels and looking backwards. I don't, uh, it's just never been me. Yeah, I, I, I like that idea, but I, how did you kind of after that six months or um, you said you were started living at home, right? You were at home, you went into the office. About how long did it take <laughs> before you're like, okay, I can move? out because the business was so good or was or did that fear kind of keep you there for a decent amount of time um or are you still there <laughs> <laughs> well <laughs> i still <No. laughs> uh well we're now kids so yeah, yeah I, I do live on my own but uh <laughs> <laughs> because maybe that yeah. <laughs> um but you know but i think it's it's gradual i mean i i never to this day i mean i, I like my wife said to me the other day, you know, we, you know, we live well below our means, and mm -hmm. I'm not complaining about that. I, th yeah. I, I think that's, um, and that works for me. I'm, you know, I'm not uh, this overly materialistic person. Yeah. You know, I always buy used cars. I drive a, you know, four year old car, mm -hmm. um, and I do live below my means. But I would rather um, live that way. I, I think it works. I mean, it's, it works for me um, because I don't really want to be tied down to, you know, material mm -hmm. things. I, you know, I like, to me, money is just about freedom. Mm -hmm. You know, that's how I look at it. I like to, I mean, that's what drives me to is, is to, um, to have the freedom and know I could do something not that I necessarily want it or have to do it. Mm -hmm. Um, so I, you know, I'm, and I didn't, you know, grow very, you know, middle-class family. So I don't, you know, I'm not the, uh, you know, flashy, uh, yeah. <laughs> Flash a guy or have, you know, hundred thousand dollar cars, anything like that. Yeah. I think we're in the same company. Yeah. No, <laughs> and like I actually like this reminds me of like what my my dad used to tell me, like I just, you just made me think of it, Gary. It's like you, you know, the when a person starts winning when like the work becomes fun, right? Like once you get to that level where you're like do working, right, and you're making enough money that you have the freedom to do whatever you want, but then you just turn back to like working because you enjoy it, right? I think that's like the, like that perfect like synchronicity right or whatever you call it like that synergy where you know you've done the right thing where like you can have all the time you do whatever you want but you choose to work because you you truly enjoy it whether it be like meeting other people or you know closing deals or, or whatever industry you're in so yeah that just like reminded me of that so that's pretty cool right because you know it's a lot more enjoyable to mm -hmm. go to work um because yeah but like you said because you want to be there you want to do it mm -hmm. Um, and, and it's enjoyable for you and, and uh, you know, it's, it's an accomplishment and you're helping somebody else and not just, you know, that you're just punching a clock because you have to do it, but you have to be there. You know, mm -hmm. it kind of gives you that confidence, and that 
freedom to sort of do what makes uh, or to do what's best for you also, you know, to uh, do things that you enjoy or um, even say no to things that you think are, you know, like I said, in the beginning, you know, we took on everything and anything, mm -hmm. you know, mm -hmm. things that we probably now would be like, okay, yeah, that's not yeah. something I really want to take yeah. on. Um, mm -hmm. So, yeah, so it does give you that sort of that free, like I said, you know, freedom's a big, in my opinion, it's just, it's a big deal, you right. know, for your, for your, for your mindset to, uh, whether it be home, you know, or your personal life or your work life to have sort of a, a sense of freedom. How, how long did it take before you started feeling comfortable saying no to certain business? Um, well, that's a great question. So we were, I was taught, or Mark and I, so one of the first um, lawyers that we ever met, um, not in our office, but just another lawyer we had up in a meet early on, mm -hmm. uh, once told us that's just as important to clients that you do not take on as the ones that you do. Because when you take on a client who, um, for whatever reason, whether, you know, be the type of work they want or what they're asking you to do or something that, you know, uh, uh, for your own professional reasons don't want to take on, what you're doing not only is are you um, sort of cheating yourself out of doing what you want to do, but you're also prevent, uh, preventing yourself from opportunity costs because that client could take up your time where maybe the next day a good client comes along and now you don't have time to service that client because you're too busy taking on this work or that client that you didn't want. So um, as far as the time though, um, that's hard to say. I think it just sort of, um, like I said before, you know, you just, look back and you say, oh, hey, you know what? I'm not the same person I was, you know, but you don't always realize. I think, again, just um, over time, building your, you know, building your business and building your confidence and getting the experience and the, the freedom and the confidence, you'll find yourself um, sort of um, having the mindset of, okay, now I could pick out and, you know, in a blink of an eye, you know, what I want to do or who I want to mm -hmm. work with, and it just mm -hmm. becomes natural. Was that pretty quickly, or was that probably within a few years? Um, no, I think my, no, it takes, I think it takes years. It takes years to yeah. realize that. Yeah, because, because, um, you know, in my business, I was, um, like I said, sort of learning on the job mm -hmm. in the beginning, right. so you have sort of like two-fold pressure. You have, you have the pressure of getting clients, you know, and, and making ends meet, and also the pressure of sustain the business and getting uh you know um and knowing what you're doing you know so it's it's really sort of um you know twofold anxiety yeah. uh, um but then like i said eventually you know they both sort of diminish as, as time goes on and you just um you know i think the more you do and the more situations you encounter um and you deal with that just gives you one more notch in your belt to so when it comes around the next time, you say, oh, okay. Yeah, I know what you're about. Yeah, I'm not, you know, yeah. I'm not doing that. <laughs> yeah, so, now that's very interesting. So kind of going on the, the theme, the title of the podcast is Alone and So Very Afraid. Um, you started out immediately kind of with a, with a partner, but were there times where you still felt sort of isolated because um, you know, personally, you're still stressed by yourself, <laughs> right? The, the stress that you can't really share stress. Right. So you, you bear it on your own. Were there points in time during this, tw these 29 years uh, <laughs> that you ever feel like, what am I doing? Or, or, or made or, you want to get into a quit uh, your own business and go, go into a corporate oh, world or something like that. Almost every day. <laughs> 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 my, my wife will tell you that, uh, that uh, whenever this law thing doesn't work out, my, my dream job is to be a Walmart reader, yeah. <laughs> um, but, it, but in a warm weather location, though. Yeah, not, yeah. not already, you know, yeah. Yeah, maybe somewhere in South Florida, but yeah, uh, yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah no, no, I, uh, there are a lot of days just that I just want to give it up. Why am I dealing with this? And why am I putting up with this person or that person or this thing, you know? Um, but, um, but at the end of the day, I mean, really, um, I wouldn't have wanted it any other way. Um, I'm not a, sort of a good corporate person. I, I wouldn't, I can't, I could never see myself fitting into a corporate structure. Um, I, even, even my networking sometimes, um, you know, I have trouble being in groups because I don't like to be micromanaged. I don't like rules, you know, <laughs> if things don't make sense to me, you know, I, you know, I just have to speak up and then, you know, I, I'm sort of uh, not fitting into the group sometimes, you know, so 
Um, I'm very um, independent person, and so being in my own business is really the only thing I think I could have done in life because I wouldn't have made it anywhere else. Yeah. So what yeah. was like, like again, like back to like starting off, or even before you became like majors in press LLC? Like, what was like a time where? If you can give an example of like when like oh man this is like horrible like am I actually like fit for this business was there every time like that or were you just able to kind of get through most things? Um, yeah, I mean there was that probably um, well, I mean one good thing I think in that right. respect was um, so Mark and I, mm -hmm. I we especially for for being lawyers we do not even have a partnership agreement the oh. two of us. <laughs> wow. Um, because we're, we're, we're really like brothers and we've always, um, yeah. sort of treated each other that way. Mm -hmm. Um, and you know, we don't ever squabble about, oh, I brought more business in than you did this month or this week and, or, you know, or you or vice versa. Um, and I think just the fact that we've gone 29 years on basically a, a handshake, mm -hmm. um, is really the base of a great partnership because we really are in it together, which I think does help to what Alex, you're asking. Mm -hmm. um, so even when there were hard times or we disagreed about something or, um, you know, which way or what to do business wise or um, that, I think we always came back to the fact that like, hey, you know, we both want this to succeed and we have to work it out. We don't have a choice. You know, we. You know, we're not going to stand ceremony. We're not going to look to some agreement. We're going to, as brothers would, just work it out. Yeah. Um, and so, so yeah. So, you know, so of course, over that long time period, I mean, yeah, there's <laughs> been a lot of times where, you know, we've had challenges, gotten in fights, uh, you know, verbally. I wouldn't yeah. fight him physically, the big guy. <laughs> Mark, Mark plays like an ox. <laughs> so I'm, I'm not that you know, strong of a dude. So no, nothing, uh, nothing physical. But uh, um, but no, I think we're just really, um, you know, effectively funny. like, I mean, even to this day, like sometimes, you know, we'll, um, you know, some issue will come up and we'll talk or, or give each other some advice or leeway on something. He's like, you know, I say, you know, man, he's like, I love you. I love, you. I love you, man. I mean, yeah. so that's just how he talks exactly the way he's like, I love you, man. And that, and that's really why I think we've survived as long as we have, because, you know, we know it's, we have sort of like this us against the world mentality, the two of us, and we yeah. give, each, you know, each other the space to do what we need to do. Oh, that's a great environment to be in, to, yeah. to kind of have that. I think we, we, we basically sort of have that as well yeah, yeah, uh, right off definitely. the bat yeah uh, i don't think i've ever actually walked away completely by myself to start a business <laughs> i always had some some other co-founder or partner I I the whole time i think dan man if dan was here he probably could give better perspective because dan actually was off, off on his own for like maybe a year right. yeah, <laughs> before right. he, he we we came together as pad scouts oh exactly but even yeah. like you know that the, the partnerships like that kind of stuff even like anywhere you go it's always good to have like like a second opinion or like a like a brother figure over you just to that helps a lot you know i, I find that i'm just thinking back in what i do like with the real estate deals or doing this like it's always good to have like a second hand second opinion uh, that helps really push things forward so man, that's pretty neat yeah yeah in fact actually when, after that first office when we were with the mm -hmm. other group of lawyers so we were there for about two years um, before we then ventured off and rented our own office space by ourselves. Um, and that was actually, um, at least in my head, because, you know, like I said, I was always sort of uneasy on the law side of it. You know, oh my goodness, you know, I'm only, you know, two years out of law school. Mm -hmm. What do I really, uh, how much do I really know? And now I, we don't have that support system with all the other lawyers in the same office when we needed advice or you know, on the legal side of what to do on something if we ran into, the, into trouble. Um, so here we were now in our own office and it's really just the two of us and nobody else around. Um, so that was also a scary time. Um, and again, you know, Mark and I balance each other out really well. Um, I think what he's, his strong points are my weak points and vice versa. Um, you know, I always remember him saying, like, listen, man, you know, we, we got each other. We're, we're going to do it. We're going to be fine. We're going we're to do it. I'm like, all right. <laughs> let's, let's do it <laughs> what, what gave you guys the confidence after two years to to 
move out on your own uh, because I mean that was a that was a, almost like a lead source for you guys huh? right. um, like what made it comfortable for you to go you know I don't we can walk away from this and be fine on our own yeah I don't think we were confident I think I think we uh, <laughs> we uh, acted and then thought about it later right. <laughs> um, so for example um, because things at our old office started um, going well north for us south for the rest of the office so what I mean by that is uh, we after two years we started getting busier mm -hmm. you know uh, and the um, we were sort of outgrowing the office and uh, the guy we were renting office space started getting annoyed with us we're getting <laughs> so we shared a phone and we were getting too many phone calls and he was tired of answering our phone calls and so because back then there was no uh, right. Cell phones, email. no yeah, email. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. We're talking 1993 here, yeah. so yeah. <laughs> gotta, gotta put this in perspective. Yeah. Uh, yeah, so it was a regular, you know, phone you have to pick up with a cord on it. Yeah. Uh, and he was getting annoyed that we were taking up all the phone time, you know. And so he would, you know, I still remember this day he would answer the phone, like, you know, Price, that's your 28th call today, you know. Yeah. <laughs> I'm only charging you rent for 10 calls a day, you know. So <laughs> so we were just kind of getting annoyed with the office politics, mm -hmm. sort, of, sort of. and. So like, okay, we have to get out of here, you know, and go off on our own. And so it wasn't like I said, a real well thought out yeah. plan. It was just sort of like we were tired of where we were, and we, you know, had to uh, had to make a move. Yeah, that's amazing though. Uh, so after two years, you guys started to yeah. have a lot of traction. How did that happen? Because now it's coming from outside the the law, you know, the office. Where was it coming from? Was it just like the reputation you guys built up in two years? It was. Um, yeah, and, and we did a lot of uh, direct mail. That was mm. pretty much, and, uh, and not for real estate, because at the time, you know, our real estate business was really just word of mouth. Mm -hmm. um, right. And, you know, we yeah. have a few closings. I mean, I probably do, you know, um, the same amount of closings in a week now that I used to do probably, you know, in a few months back <laughs> then or <laughs> six months back then, you know, so. Um, but at the time, we, we were um, really advertising for collection work. Uh, so one of our first things we did when, I, when our family and friends approached us was some collection from my partners, uh, from Mark's uh, brother who was a doctor at the time. And um, so we said, hey, let's try to build this out. Let's try expanding that. So we started sending uh, direct mailers to doctors and uh, building it up that way. So it took a while before you guys even niched into real estate. How long did that take? Um, so two years, you were direct mailing for collections and other things and then you were able to have enough business to sustain yourself to move out so how, how long did it take before real estate became kind of the like, bread and butter like part of your part of your niche yeah, yeah it. so it's probably always about you know maybe 10 percent of our practice mm -hmm. um and it probably a good I know mean, probably over 10 years before oh. I mean it wasn't that I was really tr I think though I was really trying back then to bring I mean I think at that time I was still same mentality just happy mm -hmm. to get whatever we could get work-wise and the collections what we were advertising for so that that was what was coming and the real estate would just always again just be by word of mouth and a few closings um, and then it really wasn't probably uh, for about 10 years where mm -hmm. Um, I started then um, just through a referral, started getting some investor clients. Mm -hmm. And then the more investor clients I got, um, I was able to just tell Mark that, hey, you know what? I don't have time to do anything else anymore, which I was happy about because yeah. even, the, I, I mean, honestly, I probably in wish I would have started, um, although I, you know, just young and dumb to know, but I really wish back that I would have started um, the actively looking for more real estate business back then mm -hmm. um but um but you know life's a journey right. yeah you know, it's a marathon it's not a sprint so yeah. better late than never but um but i'm happy that it worked out this way because right. um it's truly my 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 niche my calling um i mean other than the excitement of building the business and um and paying the bills and seeing the business grow collection was never my passion you know, I, I don't like going to court, honestly. I never enjoyed that. Um, even from the very beginning, I never really enjoyed going to court. It was really not what I wanted to be doing. Um, I wish I would have found, or not found, but um, sort of pursued my niche in real estate earlier, 
But like I said, but really to never, I mean, Carl Sanders didn't, uh, <laughs> yeah, exactly. start KFC till he was it's, in the seventies, yeah. but they like yeah. founded my niche before I was 70. But, uh, um, but I'm ever since I started really focused on real estate, I've been, uh, from, from, from a work standpoint, much, uh, much more happy and satisfied yeah, with my, yeah, that's uh, pretty cool. That that's 10 years, everyone just to listen. So that, <laughs> that's, I mean, it just shows you there's no like overnight success or anything like that. And, uh, yeah, that's pretty neat. And so I just want to get into real quick. So, okay, so you're you're in your office now. You start doing this, right? And you're, everything's going well. So I want to kind of tie in, like, when, when the, there's a time where you there, you met your wife, you had a kid somewhere <laughs> in between there. Like, how, how was that situation? You know, I don't want to get too personal, but oh. it's like, is that like, cause a lot of times I think people, when people have a kid, they get, you know, more focused. They realize they got to do this for that. Or how did that work out? Did that like kind of distract you in your business? Because obviously now you have an extra person to take care <laughs> of versus or like did it like motivate you more how did that work um that's a great question yeah. so my first my oldest child was born in 2000 okay so we had been out for about about nine years okay uh practicing um by the time she was born um we were actually in our second office on our own um after the shared the shared suite uh i think we had one employee at that time mm -hmm. and um so i felt pretty confident that we were that we were um doing well enough that um we could you know or i could support our family right. my wife wasn't working at the time and she um took off uh from her career you know once she got pregnant and uh um but no, i felt pretty confident at that time um to uh yeah was it just like it's like a scary situation at all, or just just more business as usual? Just gotta get after it more. Um, no, I think it, I mean having the child definitely right. um, sort of um, sort of makes you realize, you know, or, or puts the focus outside of you a little bit. Mm -hmm. um, I mean, it, it just gives you like this sort of connected feeling that hey, you know what. Uh, somebody else out there is now dependent on me. Mm -hmm. um, but I think, you know, in my uh, my head, you know, like I said, I'm, I w I've always had that same drive and mentality. Mm -hmm. So I've always had that pressure. I've always put that pressure on myself. So um, I think just having, having my daughter um, really um, just made it where um, I had something else to work for it. uh and and share you know like and share it with right right so yeah so that makes, i don't know that to me sounds terrifying in the beginning to yeah. make that decision <laughs> but by not by nine years in you probably had a decent amount right. of business that you could kind of project a little bit maybe yeah i mean it was you know um actually we've always i think we've always really um uh not sort of you know um internet massive growth you know but mm -hmm. um but we've always just sort of steadily grow, grown mm -hmm. through i mean throughout the years even from that first year so um it's always been a, a sort of a steady progression um and i've always had that trust um in in myself and the business and my partner um because we really do always lift each other up and i feel like um you know if, if i'm you know if i'm not um, as busy one you know month or even one year, you know, then he's somehow he's doing more. He's mm -hmm. doing something, and uh, or if he's down, then you know I'm I'm doing something. If I feel like um, just sort of that that confidence, that bond we have with each other, that um, I, I believe in it, and that we're gonna just we're gonna make it happen. We're gonna we're gonna one way or the other, you know, we're gonna do it because I mean we're we're both not afraid to work, you know? Right. I mean, I think as long as you're, um, as long as you're willing to work and you're, you know, you're, you're not a lazy person, which if you're in your own business, you, you know, you can't be, right. um, then I just really think uh, almost like karma that things are going to work out for you. Mm -hmm. You know, again, I think if you just, you know, you just have faith that you're doing the right things, continually do them and just believe in the process mm -hmm. that, it's gonna it'll, it'll work out you know and that's what do you think has been um kind of the keys to your success the continuous growth thing i don't think happens to all people sometimes they they basically plateau out and then 
you know, they're always chasing after more and more leads and then their past clients never come back or something like that. How have you and your uh, partner been able to kind of consistently have growth over the last, I think, 20 some years? I mean, that's that's impressive. <laughs> uh, and especially even in the beginning from, you know, zero to 10, right? How? What do you think was the key component to that? Um, it, it's a great question. <laughs> um, maybe I'm giving us too much credit, but I want to say it's just that um, that once we we get a client, we we keep a client. Mm -hmm. I think that you know that we try to give people a great experience so that they that they like us, and they want to come back to us. Um, you know, and because we, we literally have, you know, on the, especially on the collection side, clients have been with us for 10, 20 years plus, you know. Mm -hmm. um, and I think it's just because they, you know, and I want to think, hopefully, you know, this is the reason, but that they, that they, that they like us and trust us. Mm -hmm. And so if you continually build on what you have so that you're not constantly starting over yeah. um, or, mm -hmm. or we're not trying to um, sort of go from like, you know, zero to hundred. You know, that's what I was saying before. Like, you know, going back to the '90s and the, you know, the internet boom, where you saw, you know, companies go from nothing to billions of dollars mm -hmm. to bust. Mm -hmm. You know, we're sort of like it's like the tortoise and the hare story. You know, we're, yeah. you know, I mean, we're just the tortoise. I mean, just, um, you know, just plugging away, doing the right things. You know, get a client, keep a client. You know, and just continually adding on to what we've already built, and s instead of um, you know, just going from, you know, the bottom to the top and then back down again, you know, where your head is spinning. So we're just not looking for overnight success, which we're not, I mean, we're not an overnight success. We're, I mean, yeah. you know, yeah. it's just, it's, it's a lifetime of success. Yeah. yeah. I think, uh, I asked that question only because I wanted to kind of compliment you a little bit yeah. too, oh. because <laughs> I had some thought on that. Uh, one thing that you've, you've done better than I think most people I've met in business is the ability to kind of stay in touch with us and also connect with us the fact right. that you're here right sitting yeah. uh, this is this is i don't what is it 7 p.m maybe yeah. now uh at, on a wednesday that when you could be with your family to like take the time and effort to contribute to kind of you know talk to us we've had dinners before right and things like that i think that that extra mile keeps that consistency exactly. where we, we just trust you we we know you're here for us yeah. and um and that's been great yeah. i think uh, I think that's been a key to your success. Well, yeah, and like tying it back to like the real estate world, like I know when people, like if you always look at internet, you know, buying a home, selling a home, that's like a top five stressful thing that anybody <laughs> will do. I mean, we get used to it because we're doing it every day, but you know, when someone's buying a home, they're freaking it out. So anything that you can do to like relieve that a little bit, whether it be at the attorney table or, or just making an inspection go well, like that, that goes a long way, you know, and you can keep in touch with them and keep good business practices. That's how you get a... Uh, long-term client a perfect example is today like, you know we i was with gary earlier today and that that room was just like you know you could what's that saying you can like cut like a string and like it was like so tense you know but at the end of the day you know gary came in cracked a couple of jokes <laughs> saved them a thousand dollars literally you can go i'll go on record save them a thousand dollars and they're happy and that's probably i mean it's like a lifetime client i mean he's really happy and that's why like i continue to trust gary i mean he's like super happy with now when before he was like he like he was he was hating the process, you know. <laughs> so yeah, that stuff goes goes like a long way, especially in the real estate world. The uh, the whole thing with carrying a client and having them become really like a lifetime client. Yeah, though I, I heard that story about yeah, today, so and now I kind of want to bring it. Yeah, up. We gotta <laughs> now, hear now, it. Now, 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 now that's being recorded, I definitely want the, the audience to also hear Gary's uh, kidnapping story. <laughs> I, I have not heard about this kidnapping story. Alex has, um, but this will be my first time, along with the audience, to hear story. a kidnapping story that broke the ice uh, yeah. during this deal <laughs> that made everyone kind of trust yeah, gary yeah, more so and, we'll and give like a, build a lifetime short, short version <laughs> yeah. uh, okay well uh, well first of all before the kidnapping story i want to thank both yeah, of yeah. you for yeah. those kind uh compliments uh it honestly just made my day uh yeah. and i really appreciate it um because you guys are both great too uh and um i don't even know what to, i'm speechless to even <laughs> answer because uh just hearing all those nice things that you both said about me i really appreciate it. but um, it's well-deserved. You guys are awesome. And I, I 
Thank you. Yeah, yeah <laughs> so, no, we appreciate everything you do for us. Yeah, so yeah. Well, that's, again, make, yeah. made my day. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so now the kidnapping story for the fir <laughs> first time in record history. <laughs> <this story. laughs> wait, wait, this isn't going to get you in trouble, yeah. right? Oh, no. no, no, no. Okay, <laughs> okay, okay. <laughs> so, uh, so years ago, uh, my dad and I went to a, to a Bulls game. And after the game, we're, we're walking out. And this guy comes up to us with a camera. Uh, who didn't even, um, uh, you could tell didn't speak English or, or very little English, mm -hmm. sort of just handed us his camera and started pointing the Michael Jordan statue uh, to take a picture of him. And, you know, basically just he just a picture. And so, okay, we took, so we took a picture of him. And then um, my dad says, oh, he, then he says to my dad, he says, you know, where, where can I get a cab? So my dad says, oh, no, no. Where are you going? You know, we could we could drive you. So he says uh, downtown. I'm like, okay, we we'll, we we'll drive you downtown. So I um, I said to uh, I said to my dad that uh, you know we should tell him that um, that we're um, a great staffer. Yeah, I just I lost my I, right, right, yeah, no, yeah, 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 no, right. <laughs> I just lost my train of thought for a second. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay, all right, so I'm, I'm, I, all right. it's hot here, you're right. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> it's definitely hot. Yeah, it? like, okay, so, uh, all right, so I, should I just start? Yeah, that's yeah, fine. Right. Yeah, just continue. Yeah, that's okay. fine. Yeah, it doesn't right. matter. So, um, so before the game, my, my dad had parked in um, sort of the north side of the city because we had met there, and I picked him up. He left his car there, and this guy said that he was going downtown. So we said, okay, we'll, we'll, we'll drive you. So we, we start driving. We're thinking, like, well, it's probably better – that if I drop my dad off at his car first, it would be more convenient that way, and then we'll drive him downtown. But then I'm thinking, like, well, if we drive him to my dad's car, I'll see we're going away from the city. He might get nervous, thinking that we're kidnapping him, you know. <laughs> so I said to my, you know, I said to my dad, I said, well, maybe I should we should drop him off first because otherwise he'll think we're kidnapping him. So my dad turns around in the car and says to him, "Don't worry, no kidnap." I'm like, Dad, that's worse. No, <laughs> you know, all he's near is kidnapping. You think he's like, we are kidnapping him? And he goes, "Oh yeah, you're right. I better, I better." Clear that up. So he turns out, he's like, no kidnap, no. <laughs> I'm like, yeah, no. That's not, that's not going to be helpful. So I said, okay, well, maybe we should take him back to downtown first because then he'll see buildings and he'll know we're going the right way and he won't be nervous, you know. So I said, okay, well, drive him back downtown. I said, but, you know, you live downtown, so why don't I just drop you off at home after I drop him off and then you can take a cab in the morning to get your car. He's like, oh, so now we're going to save him the cab fare, but now I'll get cab fare. <laughs> <laughs> so I said, all right, fine, I'll take you back too then. Oh, yeah, so that's the, <laughs> the story. <laughs> oh, was, yeah. was that guy fearful at all at any point? I don't, I don't think so. I, I think he just thought we were a couple goofballs. Yeah. <laughs> 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 Hopefully he didn't even understand the word. Uh, exactly, yeah. Oh, that, that was probably the saving grace right there. But he, he did another No, that. no, no kidnap. Yeah. Yeah, no no kidnap. kidnap. He's like, whatever, I don't know what kidnap is. <laughs> Oh, yeah. That's yeah. hilarious. But yeah, yeah. So that's uh, no, no, Gary. Appreciate appreciate your time here. So just uh, just real quick, you know, going up to like the the current day. Where can uh, people find you? Uh, what are you doing now? What's what's kind of your business looking like right in the current state? Just give us a little rundown. Um, yeah. So basically, I'm representing uh, buyers and sellers, uh, pretty much any type of property uh, throughout Chicago land. Um, I'm easily found on my on the web on my website um, agentsandprice.com um, I freely give out my cell phone number to anybody who will take it <laughs> and you're always welcome to call me text me uh, whatever uh, suits yeah. you uh, my cell is 847-414-3903 847-414-3903 yeah. yeah then and then kind of last uh, words uh, your a very seasoned entrepreneur. Um, what are some tips and advice you have for people who are kind of starting off on their own uh, and maybe some mistakes not to avoid uh, as they, they go through this journey? Because it really is a journey. Um, so first I would say um, to always get outside your comfort zone. Case in point, me sitting here. <laughs> so uh, because and that's one thing to answer your question before that I think over the years, looking back, I, I did change. Um, I think for m many years, um, I did stay within my comfort zone, you know, always saying 
or so my knee-jerk reaction to any question that, that was a little unusual or could be an opportunity, I would just say, oh, no, no, or I don't want to speak or I don't want to go to this networking event or this group, you know, I always just said no without even thinking about what I was saying no to. Um, but there came a time, and maybe it just comes with confidence like we were talking about before, that I turned the no's into yeses. Every time I want to say no, I became, or my knee-jerk reaction was the opposite, just say yes. What's the worst that could happen? Mm -hmm. You know, um, mm -hmm. you know, you spend a few hours at something, it was a waste of time, and okay, so you don't do it again. But always try something once and just mm -hmm. say yes. So um, I think that's a great piece of advice to people starting out that just, you know, just look at everything as an opportunity. I mean, you know, again, just say yes the first time, try it out if it's awful or, you know, um, don't go back or, you know, don't do it again. Um, but then eventually what you find is your comfort zone expands. Yeah. And as your comfort zone expands, so does your opportunity. Mm -hmm. And more opportunities will come to you as you um, as you expand that comfort zone, say yes to more things, opportunities will just naturally come. And I think, like I said, I wish um, I had done that earlier in in my career. Yeah. Um, again, better late than never. Because yeah. <laughs> um, now, my whole life is outside my comfort zone. Mm -hmm. You know, I, I'm okay. I, um, like I was up before, I mean, put me at a closing with, you know, a few people, you know, in a small group or one-on-one, -on -one. totally comfortable with that. I could be myself and it's great. Put me behind a microphone, put me <laughs> in a uh, networking group or a real estate group, yeah. you know, or I have to, you know, I, I just give like a 10 minute presentation to, uh, uh, to a women's council of realtors group I belong to. Mm -hmm. I mean, if you would have asked me that, years ago, oh my goodness, I would have been sweating, you know, to death and writing tons of notes and reading from a script and completely unnatural. And now I could probably do it in my sleep or, you know, or your elevator speech, you know, to have that sort of mm -hmm. 30 second pitch mastered where, you know, anybody asks you right away, hey, what do you do? Or what, you know, what what's different about you? Or what's your best quality? I mean, I could now rail it off my head in an instant, whereas you know, before, oh my goodness, why are they asking me this? What am I, what am I going to say? I don't know, mm -hmm. you know, so, um, it, it, and it's not, I'm not saying it's easy, it takes practice, but it starts with just saying yes. So I, so the biggest piece of advice I could give to anybody would be just, just say yes when you're presented with an opportunity or, or something that, um, you know, uh, something that might be uh, beneficial to you. Yeah, that's great that's advice. Awesome. Yeah. I, I really like that the uh, kind of getting out of your comfort zone. So something that we saw that you were a little nervous before the <laughs> podcast. Um, and you might think that I'm super comfortable with this, uh, but I'm to the, the thought of posting things on social media consistently and imperfectly is actually something that I'm ter like, I just don't like it. It's a, it's a discomfort of mine of knowing that I'm putting flaws out there uh, because I'm just, oh, maybe a video is blurry and still throwing it out there it's not perfect but um but creating that habit to kind of grow the business down the line especially in gaining awareness for ourselves we know that it's beneficial mm -hmm. and it's just something that i had to do i was like you know what i'm just gonna get cameras we're gonna commit all the way and we're going to do it and then for the last few weeks, we've just been pumping out content. It's 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 a muscle memory. Uh, there's the the editing still is you know, it's still not perfect. It's amazing. Uh, <laughs> it's, what are we talking about? Yeah, it's amazing. No. Yeah, it's, it's not perfect. Uh, I, I when I release videos, I, I release it without major edits. Um, but it's just something that even though it's imperfect, people are gonna forget then you know the next day. Right. right. They they may watch it or they may meet you for for at a networking event and you might say the wrong word at that moment, but they're going to forget two seconds later when you've actually said mm -hmm. something meaningful or impactful. And I think people who are afraid of making that one mistake and thinking that that'll kind of carry over long term, uh, it, that's just the thing that they have to get over. Yeah. And I think actually being imperfect is perfect because mm. I have found, you know, and I'm um, not a um, sort of a big poster on Facebook. You know, I mean, I post on Facebook on my business page um, periodically, but um, it's sort of, um, you know, not constant. I mean, it's it's uh, consistent, but not 
sort of every day or anything like that. Yeah. And I put sort of time and thought into it, but the posts or the things I put up on social media that do the best are things where I've let my personality show. Right. Uh -huh. And so by, I think by being imperfect, you're actually being perfect. Uh -huh. Because I think what people remember, in my opinion, is not so much, like you say, the the words or the um, you know, how the editing was or how perfect mm -hmm. the video was, yeah. but they remember how that video or that made them feel mm -hmm. and you gave them a great experience. You know, yeah. they walk away from it thinking that, you know, wow, these guys are human. I can relate to these guys, you know, and that's what I think people will remember more than even the content. Yeah. yeah. I love that. I, I think we're going to close on that. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I just love that statement. By being imperfect, you are perfect. And then the whole concept of by showcasing who you truly are and being authentic uh, is what people, what right. will actually draw people to you. Right. Um, so there you have it, guys. Uh, this is the Alone and So Very Afraid podcast. Today we had uh, Gary Magus of Mary Magus and Price uh, Attorneys at Law. Uh, he's the co-founder and also the partner at that law firm. And as we continue to do this, I just I, I'm starting to realize that this is the way I'm learning from exactly. everyone else. Yeah. And I'm hoping that the audience who's actually listening to this uh, gets the same value that I am out of these uh, podcasts and meeting these people, uh, because we always get these little nuggets of truth. And today is uh, being imperfect is or yeah, imperfection is perfection. <laughs> and all you listeners out there and watchers, don't forget to subscribe and like and continue <laughs> to listen to us for killer content. All right. Thanks for being here, Gary. Oh, all thank, right. thank you guys. Thank you. Yeah. yeah. Good to go. All right. That was good. That was good, Gary. That was fun. Yeah. <laughs> it, was, it wasn't bad, right? It was. Yeah, no. Oh, I, I, yeah, that was. That's good, Gary. I like that. Yeah, that comfort zone one. That hit me hard. That was definitely. Yeah, I, like uh, I actually wrote just on that last oh, really? Facebook post. With